Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Stacey West Preview Show. I'm your host, Jake. Uh, this week, big game on Saturday. It's Charlton Athletic at home. We're very lucky to be joined by Louis Mendes of Charlton Live. Louis, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, Jake. Thanks for having me on. No worries, buddy. Um, just good to talk some football. Uh, obviously, you've been sort of going to the football, even when there's been no supporters. How are you finding having the fans back in the ground? Oh, it's amazing. I think, um, you know, Charlton's first game of the season was at home to Sheffield Wednesday, so a massive crowd. And it, it, like, I was almost taken aback at how loud the Valley actually can be, even though I think it was a nil-nil draw as well. But I mean, you yeah, know, the, the games behind closed doors were just so droll, like so boring. Like Even like the more exciting games, it, you just lost so much from it. So having, having the fans back is, has made a massive, massive difference. And even though it's been a dreadful season for us, I've, I've just enjoyed the fact that there's people there to watch it with us. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about that then, the dreadful start of the season you've mentioned sat in the relegation places at the moment what seems to be going wrong <laughs> well everything really i mean it's the, the the most confusing thing about what's happened at the start of this season is this is probably the first time in a long time that charlton have gone into a season with, with a fairly stable ownership situation um so, so that's why it's, it's it's been mainly baffling i think um you know thomas sangard obviously came in funnily enough i think the day before we played lincoln at Cecil yeah. bank last year or a couple of days before yeah. Um, and, and there was a massive rush to, to try and put a squad together last year and there's the wage cap and all these different things that, that meant really, you know, the fact that we got even close to the playoffs last year was, was a bit of a miracle. But um, yeah, this, this year has been a bit funny. I think the, the, the way the transfer window went um, was, I mean, most fans found it a, a bit slow and I think that has probably played a big part in the fact that, that we haven't really hit the ground running as such. Obviously, we've, we've seen, you know, d- dreadful performances, but I mean, a lot of that will come down to the fact that we haven't we haven't had a, a team together for the majority of pre-season. That was one of Nigel Atkins biggest bugbears about the, um, about the transfer window. I think, you know, he's not, he's not exactly kept it to himself that he wasn't entirely happy with the way it went. Um, and, and part of that means that he's been chopping and changing a lot, that there's not really been a settled side. He, he's described it as like a second pre-season where you're getting an hour into one player, but now that means you can't have him on Tuesday, that sort of stuff. So a lot of chopping and changing like that. Um, so that's Nigel's excuse. But there is still questions to be asked about why we've been so poor, because even with this, I mean, oh, someone sent a tweet in to Ray J London when we we're doing talking about Charlton the other day, and they, they quite specifically said, you know, the the fitness excuse should see us 12th, not in the relegation zone. And, and I, I think that's a really, that was a really good point. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's not like the, the game, up until maybe the last couple. So funnily enough, the Bolton defeat, which was two games ago, where we actually played really well for about an hour and then just crumbled. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously at Fleetwood, we we won. Other than that, we, we haven't been playing a part in games. It's not like um, we've been edged out by the odd goal here and there, but it's not like, you come away thinking, oh, we really could have got something from that. It, the performances have been really lacklustre, uh, not creating chances, like really bad at the back. Um, and, and it is hard to put your finger on it because we ended last season under Nigel quite well. Uh, you know, and uh, as I said, obviously, he's he struggled to tra- sort of get that settled side. But even then, you know, a manager with his experience would have expected to at least get a little bit of organisation into him, which um, I think for the, for the opening seven or eight games in particular they've struggled with and it's been a massive disappointment. And obviously not having the fans in this year and a lot of new players in that Charlton squad, do you think they're struggling to to get the grips with the, the Charlton, you know, the supporters on the ground? Obviously you spoke about the big crowd there against Sheffield Wednesday. Do you, we've seen with a few Lincoln players that they've sort of struggled to hit the ground running because of the, you know, the atmosphere at Central Bank. Do you think that might be the case for one of the two new boys over the summer? Yeah, I'd be surprised. I mean, it's, I mean, uh... You know, I think uh, most people will agree that Charlton are a big, one of the bigger clubs in League One. But it's not like it's not like we're you're playing at the New Camp. You know, it's the Valley, which is a you know, it's a, it's a nice stadium and it's a Premier League quality stadium. But you know, it's only half full and with with, with a, you know, a raucous crowd, like I said. But you know, I, I don't think that's an excuse that they'd be looking to use. Um, because I mean, if you look at our home form behind behind closed doors, was absolutely dreadful last season anyway. So I, yeah. I don't think I don't think anything sort of clicked or changed there. It's um, it, it's just hard to put your finger on it, really. And um, the international break, we've just you know we're just coming out the other side of it now. Um, has that sort of helped Nigel Atkins' case? Do you think? Do you think that will? I think that he's got his squad together. He's had a couple of weeks on the training ground. That might 
benefit them going forward. Yeah, I'd like to think so. I mean, the the only the only note of caution there is that Charlton's only other league win uh, came before the last international break, and then we followed that up at just in the first half of the international break with a big Papa John's trophy win, yeah. which is what we've done this time. We had a we had a, a big win uh, against Southampton. Was it four nil, four one? A couple of weeks ago. Um, but I mean, it is certainly now, I mean, I, I probably drew a line under the fitness issue two or three weeks ago. I think that you, you can't keep using that excuse. And to be fair, as I said, I think we've seen glimpses in that two or three weeks of things being a bit better, but still at times they're being a soft underbelly. So now we are looking at that Fleetwood game just before the international break and the two weeks that have followed where he's got a little bit more time to get that final bit of fitness into him and that organization and that knowing each other and gelling and whatever you want to talk about that this now has has to be it and it has to not be a, a false dawn and you know I mean it's a tough game obviously coming up to your place on Saturday yeah. um I mean I think we, we we could have done with another crew Alexander at home which is probably one of the easiest games we've ever seen Charlton play yeah uh, which is our, our other league win this season but yeah it'd be very very interesting to see how they sort of shape up and how they've reacted to this international break on Saturday. Um, let's, talk, let's go sort of back towards the start of the international break, the Fleetwood game, um, where you come away 2-1 winners. Um, Fleetwood are a decent side, aren't they? So there's no mean feat to go up there and, and turn them over the way he did. I was especially impressed with Charlie Kirk. I think that he, he rustled the home fans up a little bit as well, didn't he? Yeah, and, and that was that, that was a big game for Charlie, actually, because, um, you know, he came, funnily enough, from crew we just spoke about that, he came really highly rated. But actually, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure many people would know this outside of, of really keeping an eye on it, but he came about three days after his dad died. So he's moved moved down south to a completely new location, away from from his home home club, uh, at a horrible time to do it. And and if we're being honest, he hasn't hit the ground running for obvious reasons, but that, that game was his best game, I think, for, for me. Um, and yeah, I mean, a Fleetwood side, as you said, who are quite good. They ship goals, but they score a lot of goals as well. Um, so the, the fact that we... <laughs> We uh, that we kept him out. Only it was only one sort of one to free kick from from Danny Andrew. The fact mm-hmm. that we managed to do that and and defend actually looked looked more organised. There was a couple of moments, you know, it wasn't a perfect performance by any stretch, but we looked more organised. And our attacking players, who we've brought in towards the end of the transfer window, have started now to 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 look a bit more lively. So you've mentioned Charlie Kirk. I mean, Jonathan Lecco was was outstanding uh, up there. Elliot Lee. Uh, playing sort of just off the strikers has um, has been looking lively as well. So yeah, there, there's certainly positives to take from that game. And and again, you you hope it's going to be like the the result and the performance that kickstarts things, um, and showed perhaps a little bit of bottle, which they haven't showed enough any at times this season. You know, particularly the Bolton game, which was the one before that, the Tuesday night. I mean, a lot of us thought Nigel be gone after that because. You know, for an hour, it was probably our, our best performance of the season. Like we were one nil up, conceding on the stroke of half time. It was, you know, quite even at the start of the second half. But you felt something was sort of building, and then last fifteen minutes conceded three, lost four one. You know, Nigel looked absolutely shell shocked after in the interviews. Like it's weird. It's like doing doing the interviews after you have to you have to really look at a man when you're speaking to him, and he. He looked like he'd been hit by a train, like, and and he was he was saying like I still want to like he sort of said it unprompted, you know I still want to be here. So you, you're starting to think well what's been said behind the scenes if he's coming out and saying I want to keep my job. Yeah. So the the fact he got a reaction from that, I mean it's, it's given him a bit of breathing space, but it's certainly not out of the woods yet by any stretch. Um, you, you sort of touched on the attacking players that are that were impressing for for Charlton in recent weeks. Um, one question that I've sort of asked a few people uh, that have come on the pod this sort of time of the season, you know, now we're sort of 10, 12 games in, which of the summer signings for you has made the biggest impact um, so far for Charlton this year? Um, yeah, I, I think I would say Jonathan Lecco, who I've mentioned there again, and, and he's only sort of just come into full fitness in his last the last couple of games. But, um, you know, he's, he's a player we had on loan a couple of years ago when he was at, uh, West Brom and we were in the championship so him coming back and I, I thought he did quite well for us in the championship I mean, he's a bit hit and miss because he's a winger but actually his goal and assist uh, record was pretty impressive for what ended up only being August to December because he got a bad knee injury in December and went back uh, obviously he's gone to Birmingham and with, with Bo so Bo, Bo's obviously seen something he liked about him and taken him to Birmingham but it hasn't really worked out for him there so it was going to be a question of well how, how's he going to sort of react coming back to Charlton, somewhere where he's really liked, but we know he's in poor form. But he's 
hit the ground run. He scored against Cheltenham when he came off the bench. Um, that faded quite quickly. Obviously, again, with him, fitness didn't quite seem to be up to it. But last two games, he's got uh, two assists um, and a goal of his own uh, and and could have had more as well. He's, he's looked really good. He's really pacey, really direct. Uh, one thing that everyone always says about Jonathan is um, not only do you, like we not know what he's going to do next, but he does give the impression that he doesn't know what he's going to do next with the ball. Like his feet, he's, he's so unpredictable yeah. and, and and quite bamboozling for defense for defenses. Like if he doesn't know, then how does anyone else know? And he does make for an exciting player. But I, I really like him, and I think he's uh, he's had a superb sort of last few weeks. And, and as somebody who covers the game quite extensively, I'm quite keen to sort of get your thoughts on not only our sort of link in the season last year, how we sort of defied the odds and got into the playoffs and, and, and went all the way to the final, and then sort of get your opinions on what seems to be quite a slow start for Lincoln so far this year. Yeah, I mean, it, speaking to someone the other day, so it does sound like you've had you've had injury issues and 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 some key players leaving, which is always a, a tough thing to replace. I mean, you know, you you done superb last season. Funnily enough. Like I, I, the two times we played you, like I, we, I don't think we caught you on particularly good days. And I know you beat us at, at Sinsel Bank, but actually, I thought first half we we played quite well and then conceded that ridiculous, controversial yeah. goal, <laughs> the, the, the weird offside penalty thing. It was, uh, I, I was surprised Lee Bayer didn't nut the referee after that. But then obviously, when we were sort of fighting for our playoff lives, when you you guys were already safe in them towards yeah. the end of last season. Um, but look, I mean. For, for the the momentum that the club's been on over the last what five or six years coming up through the leagues it's no surprise to see that continue but it's also probably not a surprise that sometimes these things sort of level out yeah. um and you know when when injuries or, or players leaving here and and you have to wait for an, uh, some some new ones to bed in maybe, maybe that's how it goes I, I've, I don't you know obviously I haven't seen you guys play yet but I'll be surprised considering how good you have been over the last few years if you're in any sort of relegation trouble or anything like that. So, um, you know, I've, I've obviously been impressed and Michael Appleton seems like a sound manager as well. And, you know, it seems like a nice club when I went up there. So I'm, I'm hoping for the best for you guys, but obviously uh, not including Saturday. Um, let's sort of talk about League One in general then, because obviously we, we just touched on Lincoln there. Is it the strongest League One lineup in terms of, you know, you look at the spending that's been going on so far over the summer and, and you know, the bigger clubs like Charlton, you like Sunderland, like your Ipswiches that have spent quite a bit of money. Do you think it's the strongest League One lineup we've seen for quite a while? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, la- whereas last year, a lot of us at Charlton felt it must be a really bad League One because we got near the playoffs and for the majority of the season, we were pretty rubbish. Yeah, um, yeah th- this year, it, do- it does feel a bit a bit harder. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you've got, obviously, the, the, the teams that have spent money. I mean, everyone was talking really about Ipswich and Wigan. Yeah. Um, and obviously, Ipswich, are, are, you know, almost doing as badly as us, which, which <laughs> says a lot. Up until a couple of weeks ago, they were. And, um, you know, it does show that there's obviously teams in this division that, that are very capable. Um, Rotherham coming down from the championship, they always seem to be a bit of a fawn in in any League One sort of uh, season and Plymouth top in the league at the moment. So it's slightly surprised to see because, I mean, we beat them 6-0 about three or four weeks before the end of last season. So they've obviously had a had something go right in, in the summer. But yeah, it does feel like a, a good League One. Um, Wigan, uh, Wickham coming down from, from the championship seemed like a good side as well. When we played them the other day, they seemed like a pretty capable outfit. So yeah, it does feel like a strong one. And it does... Does it goes to show that with the start we've had, I think we, we've got our work cut out now to, to have any hope of getting anywhere near the playoffs. And you know, I feel sad saying that, not even a quarter of the way into the season, but that just shows a how bad we've been and b the quality of the teams that are above us really at the moment. Well, who's your best to to go up in the three spaces that are available? I, I can I can actually see Ipswich putting a run together now because I think I, I, they they finally seem to have clicked. And obviously in in Macca and McCauley Bond. Uh, they, they've got a striker who seems to be in form at the moment. He was, I, mean, I think his last game for us might have been that one at Central Bank last season. And mm-hmm. I remember thinking he was really like not not on his game at all. Uh, but we we've seen what he's like when he was in the championship. When he can get on a streak, and he's he's a good confident striker. And so if if they can keep him firing, I wouldn't be shocked to to see them um, up there. You know, chasing the pack. Um, I, I mean, from, from what I've seen so far this season, obviously impressed by by Wickham. Um, I thought I thought they were comfortably better than us without sort of blowing us away. But I thought I thought they played 
you know, really well against us. So I think I think they'll be up there as well. I'm just trying to think of the other teams that we've played so far this season. I mean, Wigan um, in the first half at, at the Valley gave us a bit of a schooling, but we kept it to nil nil, and then actually came back into it, and then they finished us off. So yeah, I mean, they, they've shown they've got they've got some decent players around them, so maybe they'll be up there. I mean, I mean the other teams that we've played so far this season. No one, no one's like again, like probably stood out quite like those guys have. Um, Portsmouth, you know, had had their positives, but they also were. I mean, they let us score twice, so they can't be that good. <laughs> Fingers crossed, we can be one of them. Then um, yeah. let's talk about Saturday. Then are, are we expecting four four two for Charlton and, and just a general score prediction as well? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's hard to say exactly what formation we'll turn out with because we have been chopping and changing a bit. Um, we don't tend to go for a four four two. I think the if from memory the only game we have played that in was that that home win against Crew. Um, I think if you if you look at the the, the uh, Fleetwood game, we're sort of like a four two three one with, with uh, sort of Leco and Kirk and Lee behind. Uh, I think it's Josh Davis when he started. Now there have been some calls for. Davison and Stockley to, to see if they could play together up top. So if that happens, then maybe we could go for a 4-4-2. But I'd probably expect the the four two three one. But again, we'll we'll see who's fit and and if there's any tinkering that Nigel wants to do. You know, he's had these two weeks now. You look at a win, hopefully you'd think, well, let, let's try and get some of that stability he wants. But some of the players he started up at Fleetwood have obviously gone off on international duty. So a few question marks around that. I mean, in terms of a prediction, um, it's it's hard to say really. Obviously, you guys you guys aren't on on the greatest run of form uh, in in terms of the whole season, and, and obviously it was only one win in, in three or four. But nor are we, so it's a tough one. I mean, I'd take a draw. I think we probably, if we're realistic about actually trying to kickstart our season, we probably need to start winning a few more games. But in terms of prediction, I, I can't. I can never predict us to lose, so I'm going to go for one all. Lovely. Well, thank you very much for, for coming on, Louis. Anything you'd like to, to plug where you'll be covering the game for on Saturday? Uh, well, I'll be up there for BBC Radio London. So if anyone in, in Lincolnshire wants to drive down to London and uh, <laughs> and tune in, you, you're more than welcome. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll put some lines on the uh, South London Press website after from, from Nigel Atkins as well. So if you're interested to see what Nigel says after the game, uh, check out my Twitter at Louis Mend, L-O-U-I-S-M-E-N-D. Uh, and uh, I'll have some post-game reaction for you. Lovely. Well, thank you again, Lou, for coming on. It's been a massive pleasure, uh, and we'll see you all for another big game on Tuesday against Wimbledon. Thank you.